If you want your wonder kids to reach their potential in Football Manager, then this video is for you. If you've ever had a wonder kid that seems like they've got everything in their locker, but doesn't quite reach their potential, this could be the reason why. It's a feature of the game that a lot of people either don't know about or they think they do, but might not know exactly how it works in full detail. I'll try and keep this as simple and as quick as possible. We'll start off with some of the basic stuff and then get into some more advanced tips to help you guys out at the end. But if you're wondering what we're talking about, it is, of course, mentoring. If you hear mentoring and think you know everything about it, I would say just stick with us in this video and I'm sure you will learn something. I'll even show you who makes a good mentor and where to find some of them. That way you've got these good mentors to pass down their knowledge onto your younger players to help them reach their potential. Before we get into it though, if you do enjoy the video, make sure you smash a like button for us and subscribe for more content like this. So mentoring, what is it? It's the process of having an older, usually more experienced player at your club passing on his knowledge and some of his skill set onto a younger player. For example, James Ward-Prowse here. He's got the personality of Resolute. He's got 18 leadership, some good determination as well. He is the kind of player that if all of your wonder kids coming through had that kind of mentality, they would develop a lot quicker and become better players in no time, helping them reach their potential. And Football Manager allows you to actually do this through the mentoring tab. If you go to training and then you go to mentoring, you'll be able to assign your mentoring groups. I did mention this in the mentoring video that we did a long while ago, so I'll just quickly mention it now. If you're someone that delegates your training through the delegation tab here, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will do the mentoring for you. Most of the time they leave this section blank and you have to do it yourself. Now, if you don't want to get involved at all with mentoring, you can ask your assistant to assign the mentoring groups and they will do that, but they don't necessarily pick the best groups, even if you think they might. So it's much better just to take five minutes to set up your mentoring groups yourself and I'll show you how to do that now and how it works. Now I've made my own mentoring group here and I've named it War Prowse and firstly I'm going to show you which of the mentors to pick and then I'm going to show you the effects that mentoring can have for your players. So firstly how do you know who's going to be a good mentor? Click this personality button up here and it will filter all of your players based on personality at your club. You then want to take the players that are maybe team leaders or experienced heads for example even though Matt Khan has got a very good driven personality I'm not going to make him a mentor he's only 16 that wouldn't make sense. But James Ward-Prowse, uh, maybe Thomas Suchek could be a good mentor as well. Mavra Panos potentially. Choose one of them, add them to a group, and they are then going to be mentoring some younger players. So let's take some younger players to add into this mentoring group. We'll put in Divan Mabwama here. We'll put in Archie Gray. Let's add them to for now. Those players are getting a significant effect from James Ward-Prowse. Sometimes if we add another player, let's take, for example, uh, Lewis Orford and put him in here. He's only got a light impact, so that isn't as good as significant and as you can imagine that means he's going to get less of an influence from this mentoring. Let's get rid of that for now though. What can mentoring do? Well firstly the first benefit you can get from it is to do with your club's social groups. If you go to dynamics and then social groups you really want everyone to be in your core social group but that is very unlikely to happen. Two social groups is fine but when you get players like Archie Gray on his own who doesn't fit with anyone you want them to be part of the core social group with your team. The longer he's at the club the more chance he's got of getting into one of these social groups but by mentoring with James Ward-Prowse, he'll spend time with him and there's a good chance he'll go to the core social group a lot quicker than he would if you left him without mentoring. So that's one thing it can do. It can help with your team's social groups, which helps with the way they bond and play on the pitch, which is great. But of course, that isn't the main influence of mentoring. The main thing that it does is it affects a player's personality. Now, Divan Mubwama here has a balanced personality, which is not as good as a resolute personality. So this is really going to help him. Mentoring affects a few attributes, two that you can see determination and leadership. So you want to have a mentor that's got better determination and better leadership than the person that he is mentoring. It will also affect their hidden attributes. That will include everything from professionalism to temperament to controversy, basically the things that make up and encompass a player's personality. If you have someone like Ward Prowse, he's got a resolute personality that is made up from all of those hidden attributes combined. So you don't need to know every player's hidden attributes. Just knowing that they've got a good personality tells you what those hidden attributes kind of are. So so knowing War Prowse has got a resolute personality and Divan Mubwama has only got a balanced personality, over time we should see Mubwama develop in those hidden attributes a little bit and it could see his personality shift as a whole. Now the better a player's personality, the more chance they've got to develop and the better they're going to be for you and your team. So if Mubwama can move to say a driven personality or a resolute personality over the next few years from his influence from James War Prowse, that's going to help him in terms of reaching his potential, how detailed he trains, how willing he is to improve 
as a player and it's really going to help him. So not only can you help a player's social group by doing mentoring, but also two attributes that you can see on screen and a bunch of hidden attributes that affect their personality that will really help them develop. There's one other thing that can affect players though, and that is player traits. So James Ward-Prowse has player traits of does not dive into tackles and winds up opponents. Those player traits can be passed on to the players in the mentoring group, like Divan Mabwama, like Archie Gray. Over time, you might see that he gets a player trait of winds up opponents or doesn't dive into tackles. He will learn this from the person he is being mentored by. Saying that, you can actually get player traits come to you from players that they aren't being mentored by. That's natural, of course. For example, Archie Gray isn't being mentored by Thomas Suchek, but they play together, they train together every day. There's a good chance some of his traits eventually might pass on to Archie Gray, but by mentoring, you can really focus in on passing certain traits and attributes over to certain players. Now, some traits are specific for positions. So James Ward-Prowse being a midfielder, mentoring Divan Mabwama up front will affect him in a certain sense. Obviously, Mabwama is not going to get any striker traits from James Ward-Prowse. So don't think just because a player doesn't have the same position as their mentor, they won't learn from them. It's just that you'll get less of an effect when it comes to player traits. So don't feel like only midfielders can be trained by midfielders and only defenders can be mentored by defenders. That's not really how it works. One thing that will help with your mentoring though is having players in the same unit. So you can see James Ward-Prowse here. Let's take his connection with Archie Gray. If you go to the training unit section, which basically tells you who is considered a defender, an attacker, and a goalkeeper in training, it will have a much better effect if you make sure that a player is being mentored by someone in the same unit. So James Ward-Prowse is in our attacking unit, but Archie Gray is in our defensive one, despite the fact that they play a pretty similar position. For that reason, I've just dragged Archie Gray over to our attacking unit. Now he'll get a much better influence from James or Prowse, which is going to help him over time. But the reason I suggest you don't just click this Ask Assistant to Assign button is sometimes you can actually get negative effects from mentoring. Take this example here, mentoring group four. You've got Saeed Ben Rama, who's got a balanced personality, trying to mentor Gabriel Sara, who's got a fairly professional personality. Ben Rama has a leadership of six, a determination of 14, some nice player traits, and his hidden attributes we don't know, but he's got a balanced personality. Gabriel Sara is already more of a leader. He's got the same determination and a better personality. So having someone like Ben Rama mentoring him can actually have negative effects on a player. So make sure that the players that are mentoring are players that you would want to pass on their knowledge. That also works for traits as well. Say Sai Ben Rama had a trait like dives into tackles or maybe he has argues with officials, something that you wouldn't really want a player to have. He can pass those negative traits on. So do just bear that in mind. You want to make sure that the right people are mentoring your players. But what if you don't have any good mentors at your club? Well, this is where this tip comes in. If you want to mentor some younger players, players to give them a better chance of reaching their potential, you can easily sign some mentors for your team by going to scouting, then going to players in range, finding every player that is in your current range. So we've got 9,000 players here that will be willing to join us on a transfer. You then want to go to contract status expired to find free agents. There's 605 of those. Then if we go to our search, go on this drop down tab and then go to general, you can find personality in here. And then you want to look for free agents that have this great personality. We'll start with model citizen. Nobody's came up. Maybe there'll be someone that's a model professional. I've searched for model professional. There's no one there either. I've also checked leader. Unfortunately, there isn't any available right now. But here we go. Driven. We've managed to find two players with a driven personality, which is a good one. And these don't have to be players that are going to play for you either. I mean, Wilfred Okafor is 16. He's not going to be a mentor. But Joel Ward, 34 years of age, driven personality, high leadership, high determination. He would be a perfect mentor. Now, if you approach to sign him, if he does work as a squad player for you, fine, offer him that kind of contract. But a lot of the time, with these mentors, you can sign them purely just for mentoring, offer them an emergency backup role. Joel Ward is still good enough that he won't accept that, but you could easily go for a player that spent all of his career in the fifth division of England, bring him into your team to be an emergency backup, never use him, but have him purely for his personality. So it might be a good idea if you don't have any good mentors to add a few experienced heads into your team, either ones that might actually play like Ward or go for someone specific that is just there for mentoring purposes only. I found another one here. This time I've searched for the personality of perfectionist. We've got Eric Peters. If we offered him a role, there you go. He only wants to be an emergency backup. He won't expect game time. We can pay him like a thousand pounds a week or so. That's the same you're probably spending on like a physio at your club. We get him in for two grand a week and he's going to be able to pass his knowledge onto these younger players and help them develop their game and their personality, which will mean they'll reach their potential. And yes, it might cost you a few grand a week, but now your wonder kid might end up being a 20 million pound player instead of a 5 million pound player once they 
develop purely because they might get a better personality and have a better chance of reaching their potential. That's why mentoring is so important. Make sure you're doing it in your save. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and help. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.